What's going on YouTube, one on the X from here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We are out here at On Any Motor Power Sports, right there, that place, because we are riding this. Yeah, brand new Zero SRF. Can't wait, there's a ton of stuff we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over all of the features in it, along with obviously taking it for a little ride, so let's go. Alrighty, 2022 Zero. SRF. Like I said, they review on one of these before, but this one, better battery capacity, should be a little bit more refined of a ride. And there are some crazy features we're going to go over here once I get off this ride. But uh, yeah, let's go for cruise. All right, so we're going to go from a dead stop, zero, to whatever. Here we go. Yeah. A zero, 70, 80, 90. <laughs> It's just so quiet and smooth, you don't notice it. <laughs> it's fun. It's super easy. So something I didn't get to do in my last review of the SRF was take it through some twisties. So we'll do that today. I don't feel like I need to yell. I think I'm in a library. Like I have to whisper on this thing. <laughs> it's so quiet. Listen, I love the transmission noise. For something that's got 140 foot pounds of torque, it's delivered beautifully. I do not trust these brakes. <laughs> Change directions pretty quickly. Like I said, I'm not hugely keen on the brakes. Bicyclist. Okay. Oh my god, Becky. Tons of gravel. Always gravel. Yeah, it changes directions real easily. Okay, so let's get this back to the shop. Then we're going to go over some of what I already just talked about on the bike. And we'll also go over some of the tech. So we're back, and I do want to point something out. I don't know if the camera can get this, but we went 20 miles. We we're at 93 uh, as far as the state of charge, 93% of charge. We were down to 72 and 20 miles. So we were riding a little spirited. So take that into consideration when you think about <laughs> electric bikes <laughs> all right so we just rode the 2022 zero srf and you know i like i said i did a video on this probably when they first came out a year and a half two years ago and i wasn't a huge fan of how i did it and the way i did it and so we're going to redo that and here we are with the newest and latest and greatest zeros so we're going to go through just some of the numbers some of the facts about it and then we'll talk about some of the dash and sort of how to get the different modes because it isn't as intuitive as you might think especially for a bike that is very connected to your phone i'll go over the numbers here for the specs of the zero srf and I'll just kind of scroll down. You guys can look at it, slow down the video if you need be. But I'm not going to explain every uh, piece of here because they have a good amount of information. I want to talk about the motor and the power plant of this bad boy. It is 15.6 kilowatt hours. And what's interesting is you can do the Cypher 2 upgrade or Cypher Plus 3 upgrade and actually raise the capacity to 17.3 kilowatt hours, which is a pretty impressive jump. So the battery pack here mates up with the motor, which is Z4 7510 PM permanent magnet motor. If any of uh, anybody can actually find a link that describes what the 7510 actually means, zero if you're watching, please send that information over. I'd love to have that explanation. If you have a link to anything, that'd be super helpful. Any of you guys out there, if you have a link to what 7510 as far as the motor is uh, referring to, let me know. So the way that this motor produces power is super linear, super smooth. You know, with 140 pound feet of torque, you'd expect it to rip your arms off. It really doesn't. And honestly, it's kind of diluted at the bottom end. And then as you increase revs, it really, really, really starts to pull. And then it'll get to a point and just flat plateaus. It's kind of what you'd expect. So with any bike, I got to talk about the brakes. And this particular Zero SRF or really Z any Zero electric bike, the braking's a little bit different because you have that regenerative braking. So whenever you let off the throttle, the actual motor slows you down and you get the braking from that. But the thing is, you can overpower the regenerative braking pretty easily if you push the bike to what it's capable of doing, because again, that 140 pound feet of torque really gets you moving pretty quickly. So then you gotta rely on these brakes that are J Juan or J Juan, <laughs> whoever you wanna look at it, however you wanna pronounce it. And it's a brand new, I've, 
I'm sure I've never heard of, and you may not have either, but the power of them, it's not that great. Uh, you kind of want there to be a better progression, a little more strength to them. When you start to squeeze, it doesn't really do anything. And then when you really, really, really want it to break, it'll sort of go, all right, I'll slow you down just a little bit. And I kind of don't like that. If you wanted to push this bike, you don't really have a huge amount of confidence because of the braking. We have Showa forks and rear shock, and honestly, they're adequate. They do the job really well. They're super plush. We went over some pretty bumpy sections of road and it ate them up really nicely. It was a comfortable ride. Speaking of the ride, the seat itself is also very soft and comfortable. I will note that there is a little point to when you sit on it, you sort of feel it digging into the back part of your under inner thigh. And it's kind of a unpleasant feeling, but it's, it's not super hard. I imagine it's just the way I was sitting, but uh, overall the actual seating position is super comfortable. I mean, this is a very, oh, gotta get on the bike the wrong way. Very neutral position. You're not too far forward, too far back. Your feet aren't super far back. It is more aggressive, I should say, because, you know, the rear sets aren't dead under you, but you know what? It makes for a nice ride. And if it's a bike that you use to commute on and then try to have fun on, it's perfect for that. Let's go over the dash because <laughs> the interconnection between it, it says it's effortless online. Uh, we'll show you, it's not effortless. All right, so we started up. We got a nice display, super easy to read. Zero comes up and there you go. Very simple. As we go through this, we'll look, this little switch here is what really controls a lot of this. Now, there's a phone app that really also configures the best with this. So let's play through some modes. Heated grips. If you hold it to the left, you can click on and collect and select how much of your heated grips you want to have. Hold the center, and then you can get up to the menu. And this menu page here is where we can start to kind of go through, you know, the preferences as far as how you want the gauges laid out, the brightness, the contrast, you know, what uh, what sort of backlight you want, and really kind of go through how you want this whole thing set up. Getting back out of it, you actually have to hold the left switch over, which isn't that intuitive, but then it just completely kicks you out of here. So it's <laughs> it's not the easiest, but let's go back to the mode and we'll go down to battery and it shows you the state of charge and how much range you have left. So if you ever, this is right here, change target. So if you ever want to know how far a certain place is going to take or be in order to get there. Like say you go for a long ride and you only have, you want to make sure that you come back after 40 some miles. This is where that shows that performance. This is where you can turn ABS on or off. <laughs> Those are options on or off. That's all you get. Now here's what makes it tricky or not tricky, but interesting. When we lift the bike up and are actually straight, things change you're allowed to now see how that changed to sport. It's because you're effectively getting ready to ride and that's sort of what the bike sees. It sees the kickstands up, it also sees that the angle, the lean angle is different. You're not sitting anymore. So when you wanna change modes now, see how sport is now flashing. Now you can select rain and off. That's your traction control actually. So you can change your traction control that way, but your kickstand has to be up and you have to be leaned straight, like you actually have to be upright as if you're about to take off. And that's kind of a interesting little quirk about it. So if you hold mode again, you see this sport up here flashing, same thing. Hell yeah, well, that's a, actually a custom mode, honestly. <laughs> that's a mode you can actually put in on your phone, you can change a bunch of stuff, so let's go through that. But yeah, so you have to be upright, hold the mode in, and that change what riding mode you're in. So that's really all you can do with this bike here from these switches, everything else is done through your phone. I want to point out that there is a cruise control for this, so that's pretty sweet. So if you really want to start changing things, we'll actually go through the phone and what you can add to it using their app. All right, so in order to pair this thing, you have to go through the pairing process here. And Zero walks you through how to do that and it gives you numbers and all that good stuff. And then you have to go into your menu, hit bearing, and try to get to work with your phone. So this isn't connecting. And from what I understand, that's because this switch needs to be off. Really silly. But now that it's off, 
Let's see if this will work. Bluetooth is enabled. Okay, so the actual pairing to this particular bike was a pain because someone else already has this bike paired to their phone, and unfortunately this Bluetooth can only pair to one phone at a time. But we can go through sort of a arbitrary bike setting. So you can see the rain mode, the modes here. You can change that to whatever you want. You can customize to whatever you want, to how much power you have, how much torque you have. You, you're pretty much uh, regenerative braking, neutral regenerative braking, and really change all that stuff. And then you can set where your traction controls are all to, and also change the theme. The theme is kind of silly. It's really just two points that you see on the dash. They're either orange, blue, you know, light blue, whatever you decide to change, and then hit save and update. So that's the riding modes that you can actually change. Then you go to the dashboard. The dashboard allows you to change how the clusters are set up. So as you look at the dash, top left is A, top right B, and so forth and so on. And you change what's in each one of those parts, which is kind of cool. You can sort of uh, really customize to what it is you find important. So that's pretty sweet, being able to change each quadrant into whatever it is you want. And then you can kind of look at where your bike's been, how fast it's gone, how long it's rode, what the state of charge is, all that good stuff. So there's a lot of connectivity through your phone. Just understand that there's a lot that goes into being able to get there. And that's sort of where the issues with me with Zero lie because it is not intuitive. It is rather difficult to deal with. As we finish up here with the Zero SRF, I want to bring in the Zero SR, this is the, i uh, say lower model. It starts about 19,000 out the door, and this one's about 22,000 out the door. So you're kind of getting a better bargain with this. However, the SR is 74 horsepower and 122 pound-feet of torque, whereas this one's 110 horsepower and 140 pound-feet of torque. So you are getting a good bit more. Again, the SR is 14.4 kilowatt hours, as far as battery goes, this one's 15.6 kilowatt hours and it's upgradable to 17.3 kilowatt hours. So that's a pretty significant thing. Not only that, it also has a Cypher 3 Plus system in it. So it's got a little bit better connectivity and it can definitely do a little bit more. So what are my takeaways with the Zero? It handles, it feels like a real machine. It's interesting not have any sort of motor noise as far as what we're used to. I do like the driveline noise because it's belt driven. So you have that whine, I kind of dig that. You can sort of experience the world around you a little bit differently. And I like having that different type of experience when I ride. As far as brakes goes, like I mentioned, they're not the best. Even with regenerative braking, you want more power and you want a little bit more out of them. I think that's the next step they need to do maybe some Nissan calipers, maybe better master cylinder. Any of those upgrades would be great. The suspension, again, on both, are, they're very fine. They're comfortable. They're not super soft, where if you were to ride aggressively, it'd just be flopping all over and be rough. It's definitely compliant, and you have a decent feedback through it. These bikes are hefty. I believe this was 489 pounds. This was about 500. So they definitely have their weight to them. But with the electric motor, you kind of don't notice it off the line because it just picks up so effortlessly. I wish they didn't govern these because once you get to a certain point, especially torque wise, you feel it build, 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 and then just flat lines. And that's all you get. And you kind of, you're kind of left with wanting a little bit more out of it. But you know, as far as what we'd use these bikes for, again, commuting, fun riding. Like this can be a very fun machine. It flicks through the turns really easily. Like we saw going up through that road. It's a tight, narrow road that has decent switchbacks. And it's handled with ease and it was enjoyable. It's not going to blow your doors off. But for something that's a little bit unique, it's an electric bike. Some of the other ones I've been around sort of feel like toys. I don't want to say Fisher Price, but they sort of bring you back to when you were a kid. These are definitely big boy toys. These definitely feel like a real motorcycle. And I think if Zero keeps evolving, they're gonna get there. They're getting there with the range. As I showed you, you can go back to the video and scroll through and see the uh, specs that I put up. But also with the way that it feels and the power delivery, I think if, again, upgrade the brakes and this would be a really solid machine all around. The downside that I have aside from the brakes is honestly the connectivity. 
I know the website says effortless. It is far from that. You have to have switches in different positions. The bike has to be leaned up in order to enter the actual riding modes, because if it's leaned over, you're only going through the traction control and that's it. So it's hard. Uh, the Bluetooth connectivity, if you have two people that ride this, if the other person has their phone on and it picks up that Bluetooth, you won't be able to connect with it. I just experienced that myself. I was trying to set up and get in the Bluetooth and it would not let me. I even follow the instructions that Zero gives you, which the instructions are really nice, but with this, that limitation where it can only connect to one thing, it's honestly a pretty big downside, especially with as far in depth the technology is on the Zero. It's got still got some bugs to work out, but I hope you guys enjoy this. Both of these bikes are for sale here at On Any Motor Power Sports, so please check them out online. The link's always down below. Can't think of enough to allow me to ride these two. Actually, this brand new bike, this one I didn't ride, but I already kind of know what it's going to be about after riding the big guy. But with that, you all have a good one. I'm out. <laughs> hey, old Corey. What's up? <laughs> but man, put me on the spot. He's all on the spot. Didn't expect the camera all up in his face. Welcome yeah. to Audi Moto. This is the facial scene.